start with just a sphere and a camera. Now we'll add our custom material. This will need a UUID for the asset system and a few derives. We'll add the material implementation that'll load our shader code. We'll add the shader's plugin to the app and its asset resource to the setup system. We'll create a new instance of the material and use its asset handle for our sphere. We'll define the input for a fragment shader and then write a basic shader that'll just return a single color. Try some colors and see it update in real time. We'll add the imports for our mesh and view bindings and assign the world space normal to a variable. The world normal is part of the fragment input and comes from the import for the mesh vertex output. We'll get the view vector by subtracting the view world position from the fragment world position and then compute their dot product. This will return the angle between the face on the sphere and our view vector. Faces pointing directly at the camera will be 1. Faces perpendicular to the camera will be 0. We'll use this to create the glow. We'll adjust the contrast of the dot product using the power function. We'll set our initial color for the sphere and then use our glow variable to mix in the glow color. Now we'll go to Polyhaven to download an Equa Rectangular HDRI. We'll need to add bindings to our material for the environment texture and then use the asset server to import our HDR image file. Then add the handle to the texture to our material. We'll also need to add those bindings to our shader file. To be able to sample the HDR texture, we're gonna to need to create a function that will take a world direction and return an X and Y coordinate that we can use to sample the HDR image. Next, we'll use a built-in function to calculate the reflection direction and use that to sample our HDR texture. At the top of the sphere, you can see that the image is overexposed. This is because of the dynamic range that the HDR format has. We can correct this for the display with the tone mapping function. To use the tone mapping function, we're going to have to add a few more imports. Then we can apply the function to our final output. I'm not going to show it in this video, but I added a basic camera controller to the project. If you go to the Bevy Engine asset page, there's a bunch of different options. Next, we're going to add refraction. There isn't a refraction function built in, so we're going to use this one from the Kronos OpenGL website. With just a few changes, we can translate it into WGSL. Then we can change the reflect function to refract, and then put in a value for the index of refraction. Using the output of the dot product, we'll then create a Fresnel value that we can use to blend the reflection over the refraction. Usually reflections are much brighter around the edges, and so using this, we'll be able to simulate that look. We'll add the refraction back, and then multiply it by our warm glow. The glow is looking subtle, so we'll increase its brightness. Next, we're going to sample just the red component of our HDR texture. We'll multiply and subtract by a couple vectors to adjust the image projection. Then we'll add this to the normal input of our refraction function, and it'll cause the refraction direction to vary across the surface of the sphere. Next, we'll add a plane and a list of locations that we can use to populate the scene with a bunch of spheres. We'll add point lights as child entities of the spheres so that they emit light. 